Ada Emi from Nigeria. Lokotenda Marumba from Zimbabwe is Jessica Gajan from England. Yasmina Zaytun from Lebanon from Two Botswana. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you everyone. Good morning. It's such an honor to be seated at this table and today I'm looking forward to sharing my few legal nuggets or wisdom nuggets rather on sustainable development goals. You know, poverty really breaks my heart. But what breaks my heart even more is generational poverty in the most rural communities. Communities that are unable to see beyond their living conditions because that's all they know. That's all their forefathers have known. See, I have met these communities and I work with them on a daily basis. And I'm of the opinion that it's going to take numerous lifetimes before these communities get to experience financial freedom. And as disheartening as that fact may sound, it has made me think that there is a need to mitigate the living conditions of poverty-stricken communities by helping them and tackling other developmental opportunities over and above economic empowerment. And I'm very proud that my Beauty with a Purpose, the Genesis Project, has a formula, has found a formula that creates sustainable development for economically disadvantaged communities while taking into account their limited financial means. We run a developmental program that equips parents with the necessary skills and behavioral attributes of how to create a conducive environment for the economic, physical, social, mental and cognitive development of their children. And we do this because we know that it applies to five sustainable developmental goals. That is quality education, health care for all, ending hunger, ending poverty, as well as implementing goals and strengthening global partnerships. We have intimate conversations with parent, parents in economically disadvantaged communities where we talk about issues such as nutrition in order to end hunger and deaths caused by malnutrition in alignment with sustainable development goal number two. We also have conversations about creating a healthy home space in order to ensure that we reduce deaths and we reduce preventable infections in alignment with sustainable development goal number three. And while taking into consideration the literacy of these communities, we teach these parents how to nurture their children's education in order to promote sustainable education. And this is in alignment with sustainable goal development number four. And because we are so passionate, under the Genesis Project, we're very passionate about sustainability. We work with communities and with stakeholders in the community in order to implement this project. We also get funding from national and international organizations, such as Stambik Bank Botswana and Koemadao Copper Mine, in order to align ourselves with sustainable development goal number 17, in order to strengthen implementation and our partnerships. I truly believe that teaching these communities about day-to-day -day and practical skills, behavioral attributes that they can practice on a normal day is the key to end poverty and to strengthen, to fulfill, to pursue, to achieve sustainable development goals at grassroots level. And I think that this lesson is the bridging gap that these communities really need in order to have justice against poverty. Thank you. While her feet are still on the ground, England. Hello everyone, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity today to speak in this wonderful venue in a wonderful country about a topic I am so incredibly passionate about. Today I'm going to be talking about climate change, but primarily that caused by the aviation sector. Now, climate change has a significant impact on our health, our agriculture and our food security. And although the global aviation carbon emissions stand at just 3% out of the 100%, the exponential growth of the sector means that this is set to rise to 25% by the year 2050. So it's really important that now we implement new technology in order to beat these statistics. Now, as I'm sure you're already aware, CO2 in its rise in levels is bad for our planet. Human activity has raised the atmosphere's CO2 emissions in the past 200 years by 50%, which is an absolutely crazy statistic. And global warming caused by carbon dioxide warms up our planet. 
it affects our crop growth, it affects our health and it affects our weather. So we've got natural disasters happening, floods, fires, things which are affecting human sustainability on planet Earth. Now, the solution to car decarbonisation lies within science and engineering. Hydrogen fuel is posed as the future of sustainable aviation, but like any new form of technology, it's going to be expensive to start up before it can be optimised for the masses. Luckily for us, hydrogen is abundant on planet Earth. But in order for aircraft to be powered by it, we must reimagine current configurations. And this means addressing energy production, logistics, the capture and storage of hydrogen, and also knowing that hydrogen burns faster and hotter than kerosene, which means we massively need to modify aircraft, which is a massive task for aerospace engineers. Now, I think a lot of people think of technology and they think of something which is handheld or potentially software, but technology can be the size of an aircraft. The main challenge facing engineers is to understand new fluid dynamics, structural mechanics and the phenomena a modified jet would encounter. Phenomena could include thermoacoustics, it could include flashbacks, and it can include thermal gradients. And I'm aware that I've only got three minutes to speak on this issue today. So if anybody has any questions regarding any of those things a little bit later, please come and speak to me and I'll do my best to explain them to you. In brief, hydrogen is the future. It's just going to take us a little while to get there. And this is caused by lacks of funding, but more than anything, a lack of people going into these sectors. And this is why it's of paramount importance that we encourage the next generation into science, technology, engineering and maths to sustain human life on planet Earth. Thank you. Like there's people in this planet with 200 billion dollars, but there's still children next door that can't afford food and fighting to drink water. Why the world leaders are fighting over power, money, fuel, there's women being killed under the name of honor killing. Why everyone is watching, the world is watching, there's wars going on and on. There's innocent people that are being killed and that's unacceptable. That's why I want to ask you, are we losing humanity? I'm scared to lose humanity because this is all what we need as a human to have humanity. I'm sorry, I'm so emotional. <laughs> I believe like everyone, everywhere in this planet, no matter what they come from or who they are, they deserve to have basic human rights. They deserve to have clean water, healthy food, electricity. They deserve to have access to education and to health care. Life is unfair. And like Angelina Jolie said once, there's women out there with the same abilities as me, maybe prettier than me, smarter than me, stronger than me, but she sits in a refugee camp with no voice. So I'm her voice. I'm here for them and to protect them and to be here for them. So sustainable development is our mission, all of us, not just mine. It's all of us, it's our responsibility, because those people don't have a voice. We are their voice. And we're not waiting for any leader or decision maker to step or to do the first step, because we are the leaders, and it's our responsibility. You are the leaders, because we don't just talk, but we act. Shukran. So much and good morning, everyone. It's such an honor to be here. When I was seven years old, I watched the movie Honey for the first time. Um, it's a movie about Jessica Alba. That was my first encounter with her. And I fell in love with her and her character in the movie, so much so that I wanted to be an actress and a dancer. However, I did not know that when Jessica Alba was really young, she battled severe um, asthma, she battled pneumonia, she battled really terrible health concerns and was in and out of the hospital. But she made it out alive thanks to healthcare. In my continent of Africa, there is Desmond Tutu, who did phenomenal in his work against the apartheid. Um, so much so that he got the Nobel Peace Prize Award in 1984 for his recognition of his work. But when he was young, at 12, he had tuberculosis 
but he made it alive thanks to healthcare. I'm sure you know where this is going. Um, also Sean White, he's a gold Olympic medalist and when he was a baby he suffered from really terrible health, health, heart issues and had to undergo three open heart surgeries but he made it thanks to healthcare. When I was 11, I suffered severe malaria. In my country, it's just malaria, but I thought I would die. But I'm here thanks to healthcare. I believe that health is the anchor to all things. A sick person cannot be educated. A sick person cannot go to school. A sick person cannot walk or have access to a beautiful life. And that is why I took a detour in my project after giving 100 scholarships to children to switching it to health when I realized there was a need for me to step in for Sister Samaritan in my community. And I will say this, we are all seated here with our beautiful dreams. We have access, I just look at every woman here and I see survivors, people who are healthy, who are beautiful, and we can achieve this our dreams because we are healthy. And even if we are not healthy because we all have our hidden battles, you have access to quality health care for you to be sustained to be here. But who speaks for those who don't have access to health care? What happens to their dreams? What, what happens to them? That is why I shout loudly at the top of my lungs, at the top of my voice for health care. In 2020, the world crumbled because of the COVID-19. And it talks about the interconnectedness of all of us. How a disease that started in one place spread across the world and put, broke down economies and shut down nations. How prepared are we for the next endemic? God forbid, but how prepared are we if that happens? And that is why I enjoy every single person, every single nation, 117 of us seated in this room to fight for healthcare and to speak for the access for people who are deserve, every life is deserving, everybody deserves a chance and a shot at life. Thank you so much. South Africa, and now the final presenter from the African continent, is Zimbabwe and this is Nokotenda Marumwa and Nokotenda is studying for a degree in social work and she one day would like to work for governments, NGOs and the United Nations so welcome Zimbabwe. Um, hello everyone I am very grateful to have this opportunity to speak to you all you know, it hurts me so much to know that on one part of the world, we have food waste plugging the planet. And on the other side, we have got people who are living in extreme poverty. Let, let's move our faces to, to the numbers for a little bit. Did you know that approximately 820 million people are living in extreme hunger and poverty? It could be due to conflict, due to climate change, due to economic shocks. But I found a solution. And let me tell you something. Behind every statistic, there is a story. A story of a community living in poverty. A story of a family struggling to put food on the table. A story of a child who is malnourished. A story of a child who cannot go to school because of poverty. A story of a child who goes to bed hungry. A story of a child who is dying of hunger and we speak about children are the future. Well, I do have a solution to the problem of hunger and food insecurity. And I am a testament to the power of that solution, sustainable agriculture. I come from humble beginnings and I'm not ashamed to say that. We have small agricultural projects at home. I've got a small vegetable garden. I've got a small poultry project. I've got a small maize field in our yard, a very small yard, but we have all that in there to sustain for ourselves, to be able to put food on the table. Not only that, but mind you, I'm a student in university and my school fees comes from those poultry projects that we have at home. Sustainable agriculture is not only about putting food on the table, it is a means of generating income, hence eradicating poverty. One thing I want to tell you all is we need to work together. I formed the Thrive Sustain Aid Network 
in order for me to empower vulnerable communities because I know the solution to eradicate hunger. I know the solution to food security and I want everybody who faced the same challenge as I faced to also have the solution and be able to implement it in their lives to eradicate hunger in their households. I formed the Thrive Sustain Aid Network and partnered up with the government and the Ministry of Agriculture in my country through the Department of Agritex and I invited an agronomist who happens to be my mother to come with me on my outreaches to teach people on sustainable agriculture. We donated foodstuffs, we gave them seed and fertilizers for them to plant and sustain for themselves in the future. We need to work together and build up connections as different countries. We need to build connections, we need to work together, we need to work with governments, non-governmental organizations, the World Food Program, to help each other eradicate this problem of hunger. One earth, one family, one future is not just a mantra. It is a promise that we all must fulfill. One thing I want to tell you is, when we feed the world, we feed the future. Thank you.